Rod, uh, this painting we're looking at now, titled Stained Glass, is perhaps the signature piece for the exhibition, and it's really your backyard, isn't it? Would you like to just tell us a little bit about why you chose a composition like this and some of the technique that you did in developing that uh, theme? Indeed. Well, let's start with the material. It's a pastel, of course, a dry pastel, soft pastel. It's a Newcastle beach, mm -hmm. and the left-hand wave is one that I've surfed regularly. <laughs> right. Not of late, unfortunately, but it's one of those magical waves and a magical time of day, too. The stained glass effect was achieved by just dropping it with the light behind and allowing the curtain of the wave to reveal all of its colours. That's great. Um, also, Rod, the, the technique working oh, in pastel, yes. uh, you obviously have uh, in considerable skills in working in pastel, and this to me, the way the feathering and the uh, translucency of light, uh, there must be some, um, some amazing skill and technique. Can you, without revealing all the complete mm. uh, uh, detail, give us an insight of what you do to capture that effect. It's, uh, this stained glass is such an apt title for a work. It is. The, the method I've been using is a, a series of trial and error. Yeah. There's no hard and fast method to reduce this style, but uh, a, a careful application of the pastel and then a, a small amount of rubbing to remove and blend as well, to get the modulation through the colour and the softness in some of this detail especially working through this rhythmic style, this part here. It's important to be able to rub back regularly and get a nice smooth method. So there's almost a sense of kung fu about it, the application. Rod, this is a different composition for you, Lower Fort Street in Sydney. Um, it looks a really complicated composition, angles, perspectives, light play and whatever. What attracts you to paint a composition that looks so complicated to me? Well, I suppose it's one of those perpetual views. It's one of my favourite views of Sydney, so it's a, a, a view that I'm very familiar with. Uh, I was born in Parramatta, but I've lived in Newcastle for 35 years now. So, But this area on Observatory Hill is close to my heart, mm -hmm. and it's very well practised. It was work from a pen and ink drawing, and which I trust implicitly, and so all the detail was stored in that original drawing. Uh, and it was a purposeful task to try and achieve every angle, perspective and detail on the afternoon that I was there. Uh, at the time my boys were across at Luna Park, yeah. travelling on a ferry across the harbour. Well, no. So it had a personal meaning for me at, the, at that time. But it's been a perpetual image in my mind and one that many artists have rendered over the years. And so it's not a difficult thing then to work in the perspective detail and all those things. The technique was fairly similar to the, uh, the pastel wave pictures uh, and the water, except that there's a lot more architecture, of course. And that's about the limit of the pastels, with all the grid work in the, in the bridge. When you say the limit, uh, what do you mean there, in terms of colour range? No, or? that's really pushing the pastels as far as they can go. Uh, the, the fidelity in that, uh, in the grid work in that, in the bridge, the span, is uh, testing my abilities as far as I can go. My drafting skills are reasonably limited, yeah. but uh, in this, I think I've achieved a sense of uh, the fullness of the bridge without revealing all of its architecture. Uh, the other side of this too is that there's a little personal story going on in the foreground here too, that helps to give a little intimacy to the to the landscape. Of course, Miller's Point's a very quiet, intimate area. And the CBD is just on the other side of the Bradfield Highway here. So you've got all the bustle here and all the stillness and quietness. And, and do you plan to, um, to do more subject of uh, Sydney? And absolutely, Sydney yes, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's very close to my heart. Oh, that's good. So um, for some of our viewers who are watching this, uh, what other areas do you think you'd like to, to paint and capture? Well, my limitation is within the city itself. Right. So that includes everywhere from Rushcutters Bay all the way out to the outer limit of Broadway, right across to Maroubra, and backing up the harbour up towards Goat Island, uh, Hunters Hill, Lavender Bay, of course, where Brett Whiteling was. And it's a great haunt for many artists. So I'm testing my hand with the pastels. I'll see how they go. 
Rod, uh, you've been exhibiting with the Cooksville Galleries for many years now. In fact, I looked in my diary the other day and it's probably nearly 30 years. Um, the painting we're going to talk about now is perhaps a classic Rod Bathgate painting. Um, it's a painting here of uh, Bar Beach and uh, you might like to tell us why is it that you love this coastline so much and why is it that you paint it as you do? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head right there, Mark. I'm very familiar with the area. I'm also in love with the area. All right. My whole family's here. My, my own children grew up in the area. But Susan Gilmore and Bar Beach happen to be those little gems right along this part of the coastline. Uh, they incorporate wonderful headlands and this fabulous looking water that I've just been drawn to time and time and time again. As you said, we've, we've exhibited over the years, and this is my signature. Yeah, yeah. This is what most people will understand when they see my work, they'll register, that's a Rod Bath day. Mm. You get, or you capture this refraction of light, which I would imagine is the envy of a lot of amateur artists. Um, you just seem to be able to capture the wetness of the water the shallow waters with a light play and ref refraction and reflection. Uh, is this a difficult thing to do as a, as a technique? Uh, it's an acquired thing. It's nothing that came overnight. But again, it's something that's been a focus of my attention over the years. Uh, surfing in the area, also you know, playing with the children in those shallows. And that refraction and light in the water is uniquely Australian. There's a freshness and a cleanness in the city beaches. You get, the, you get it along the coastline and in the remote areas, but you happen to get it in our own metro, which is fantastic. So, uh, In my mind, I don't have to improve or gild the lily. All, it's all in front of me, the, right in our backyard. So it's our playground. The technique, by the way, is a little uh, tricky in that I don't approach it the same way every time. Uh, often I have a bit of a shambles with my pastels, the way they're laid out, so it's a bit of a pig and a poke to decide which is going to come first. There's a rough, broad technique that I use, but each one has its own signature. Each work is created individually. Now I've tested this by trying to repeat what I do, and it cannot be done, not even by myself, so 